All right, so let's look at our first fraction problem. Let's say that we have x plus 1 half equals, let's say, 2 thirds. All right, so it's going to be the same process, but now it's more complicated because there are fractions. And the simple truth is that fractions are more difficult to deal with than normal whole numbers. So we got to be a little bit more careful, but the process is the same. We still want to get x by itself. That's still our goal. But to do so, we're just going to have to be a little bit more careful, but we'll follow the same steps. So right now, since we want to get x equals something, it has this plus one half attached to it. And so to cancel out adding a half, we're going to have to subtract one half, right? We're just subtracting the same quantity because we know that when we have a half and we take away a half, that we're in, we end up with nothing. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. And we know that one half minus one half, those cancel. And so we get that X is two thirds minus a half. Now here's where you have to be careful because this is different. These do not simplify like whole numbers do. One of the most common mistakes I see is that people just go straight across when adding or subtracting fractions. They'll do two minus one is one and three minus two is one. So you get one over one, which is definitely not the right answer. So what we have to do when adding or subtracting fractions is to find a common denominator. And you can always multiply the two denominators together, in this case six, two times three is six, to get one that is common for both of them. And for this two thirds, we changed the denominator to six by multiplying by two. And we have to do the same to the top or else we change the fraction's value. So two times two is four. And notice that four sixths would simplify back to two thirds. If we divide top and bottom by two, it gets back to two thirds, which is your way to check that you're doing this correctly. If this was two sixths, two sixths would only simplify to one third. So you can see why it's important to multiply this top number, this numerator by two. And then we have minus a half. We multiply the two by three to get to a denominator of six. So we'll do the same to the top. One times three is three. And notice three six would simplify to one half. So we know we did that right. And four six minus three six is just one sixth. So that's our answer. We want to check it though. It's a little bit harder to check because again, we're dealing with fractions. But we're going to plug in 1 sixth here. So you get a sixth plus a half. And the question is, does this equal 2 thirds? Well, we'd have to give these a common denominator. Um, if one is a multiple of the other, you can use that multiple. So in this case, six would actually work for both. So 1 sixth plus, well, we got to make this 1 half into sixth. We already know that that just makes 3 sixths. And one, now once we have a common denominator, we just go straight across in the top. All right, the denominator stays the same. So we have one of these sixths, and we're adding three more sixths. So in total, we have four sixths, which simplifies to two thirds, which is what we expected. So we know for sure that this is definitely the right answer. Okay, moving on to another fraction problem. Let's say that we have a minus one fifth equals two sevenths. All right, so we know our goal is to get a by itself. So we have to cancel out this minus one fifth. So we'll do the opposite. We will add one fifth to each side of this. And that way minus one fifth plus one fifth will cancel each other out and will just give us zero. So we get that a is two sevenths plus one fifth and we're adding fractions. So we need a common denominator. And when we multiply five and seven, we get 35 for each of these denominators. And we multiplied seven by five, so we'll do the same to the two. And we multiplied five by seven, so we'll do the same to the one. So two times five gives us 10 for this numerator and 10 35ths does simplify to two sevenths. And one times seven is seven. And again, seven 35ths does simplify to one fifth. So we have 10 of these 35ths and we're adding seven more 35ths. So in total, you have 17 35ths. And in this case, we would check it. So you always wanna get in this habit until you feel like you have perfect mastery. And even then, it's still worth checking. It just depends the situation. If you're taking a test, then 100% of the time you should be checking unless you don't have enough time. 
But if you do have time and you're taking a test, you definitely should check your work, right? Because every human makes mistakes, including myself and every other math teacher out there. We all make mistakes. It's all about being able to catch your mistakes before somebody else does. And that's what checking your work, that's why checking your work is so important. It will catch your mistakes before other people will, before your work gets graded. Right, I've used that to my advantage my entire life, if I can. I always try and check my work. I come up with different ways just to double check once I actually perform the operations, is this actually the right answer or did I make a mistake? And if I check and it didn't work out, then I go back into my work, I find my mistake and I change it. And then I check it again. So we're gonna check it. We have A minus a fifth. So we think A is 17 30 fifths and we're gonna take away a fifth from that. So we got to change that denominator to 35 because 35 is a multiple of five. So we can use that and multiply top and bottom by seven to change it. And 17 35ths minus 7 35ths gives us 10 35ths, which does simplify to two sevenths, which is what we expected, which means that 17 35ths is the correct value for A. Okay, and to finish off this video for one step, equations with addition and subtraction. Let's do one question where we have decimals. So let's say we have x minus 0 0.15 equals 0 0.60. And this problem, even though it has decimals, is going to work just like the previous ones. There's really no difference in the strategy here. Our goal, as always, is to get x equals something. And to do so, we got to get x by itself. So we have to get rid of this minus 0 0.15. And to cancel out subtraction, we will do addition. We will add that exact same quantity. And we have to do it to both sides or else we change the equation. So minus 0.15 plus 0.15, those are going to cancel and give us 0. And we get 0 0.60 plus 0.15. So let me just write that 0.6 plus 0.15. And remember with adding or subtracting decimals. What you want to do is line up the decimals. And then any places that are missing after your last digit, just fill in with zeros to match it up. And now we're adding. So you have zero for the hundredth place here. Zero plus five is five. Six and one make seven. And then the decimal just goes straight down. And zero and zero makes zero. So this is x is 0 0.75. And again, we're going to always check our work here. So let's change colors, we'll check. And we need to know when I plug in 0.75 and take away 0.15, do I get back 0.6? And again, we're gonna line up the decimals and now we're subtracting five minus five is zero, seven minus one is six. And so you do get 0 0.6, which means that our answer of 0.75, we can feel very confident is the correct answer.